Welcome back, everyone. It's PlayStation Experience. It's finally here. We are live from Anaheim, California, and I am joined by none other than Graham Smith from Drinkbox Studios. Hi, Justin. How's it going? Thanks so much for being here, man. My Obviously, uh, my good friend Ryan here is, well, is here as well. I, I was hoping you would just breeze <laughs> right by me and not introduce <laughs> Never mind the guy. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we're here to talk about a game I'm very excited for, Guacamelee 2. I say that about a lot of games, but I really honestly mean it here. Um, Guacamelee was one of my favorite games in recent memory. Uh, it came out shortly after I started working at PlayStation, so I feel like I have a, a strong personal connection to it. Um, really excited for Guacamelee 2. Can you just kind of lead us in? What's been up since the end of Guacamelee? Where does this one pick up? Uh, well, Guacamelee 2 starts about seven years after the original. Okay. Uh, so Juan seven years. Seven years, yeah. yeah. So Juan is now happily married to Lupita, who is El Presidente's daughter, the woman you rescue at the end of the first <laughs> game. And they have two children, uh, and they're living in the agave fields, and they have a nice happy life. Uh, and then one day, Waichivo, his uh, his spiritual mentor and trainer, shows up, and there's a new threat that they need to go out and deal with. Mm. I wish Threats. couldn't you have just left Juan and his family in peace? <laughs> <laughs> like, couldn't this have been a different person that comes in to save it? Poor well, they Juan. Had, they had seven years of peace. At least. Okay. Yeah, based on based on that uh, that trailer that we saw back at Paris Games Week, it looks like uh, Juan's been living a pretty good life. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> that bowl of guac, like yeah. Yeah. Can't how <laughs> how did it feel? Cause cause um, Guacamelee Two was revealed at Paris Games Week just a couple months ago. I mean, how did that feel for the team? Because that's something that I still try and wrap my mind around is how would it feel if something that I worked on was suddenly in front of hundreds uh, of thousands of people simultaneously? Yeah, it's well, it's a very stressful thing because, you know, we had been working on it for maybe around a year at the time. So, you know, you've been working on it for so long, you're not allowed to talk about it. People are always asking us, hey, are you going to make Guacamelee 2? And so that you can feel like there's a lot of excitement about the idea of a sequel and you've been working on it for a year. And then when it finally comes out and you see the, re the reaction of everyone, then it feels really gratifying. Uh, so, yeah. So you guys, um, your most recent game was Severed, I believe. That's right. Um, which was very well received. It's an excellent game. If you don't have Severed yet, go pick it up. One of the best Vita games out there. Excellent. Um, is there anything that you have picked up uh, since it's been a time, uh, f quite a while since you worked on a game like Guacamelee, you kind of shifted gears there. Is there anything that you've picked up, anything that you've learned in that time, especially like during working on Severed that you're taking into the development of Guacamelee 2? Uh, yeah, I think like you know, Severed. Severed was a really challenging uh, project because uh, the design of that game is so different from anything else that's really out there. Yeah. I mean, you can see little components of of different kind of games uh, kind of mashed together in Severed. Um, so the design of that game was really challenging, and mm -hmm. I feel like we really honed our design skills as a studio together uh, making that game. Um, and then at the same time, you know, we were always we we have our own engine and our own editor that we used to build games. So over the course of Severed's development, we continued to improve our tools, our pipelines. Uh, so uh, you know that just led us into uh, the development of Guacamelee 2 and have a more of a running start uh, at the beginning of this project. Cool. Here we are. Well, yeah, we've got some gameplay here of Guacamelee 2. Uh, are we seeing this live? Is this being played right now? This is live. Yeah. Oh my goodness. David is over How there. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> Magic. Oh. Um, <laughs> only with the power of Green Box <laughs> technologies can you. Play telepathically. <laughs> yeah. So tell us, what, what are we saying? What's what's new? Okay. So well, this is uh, uh, David is playing through the demo that we're showing here at PSX. Um, yeah, so it's it, playable at PSX. Yeah. So this is a uh, uh, this is just the start of the demo. We start the demo off uh, with some powers unlocked, but at the beginning of the, of the actual game, uh, it'll slowly you'll slowly unlock the powers over time. So cool. you can see one of the new mechanics here. Uh, this is the eagle boost. So anytime you approach one of those boost points, you can see a little arrow that appears. Um, and then you can push triangle to, to uh, shoot, slingshot yourself through the cool. boost point. Uh, this is El Mineco. He's one of the bosses, uh, one of the enemy bosses in the game. Uh, he's kind of like a weird, he's kind of a cross between like a Casanova and a birthday party magician. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I thought you were going to say Phantom of the Opera. But yeah. <laughs> well, he's, yeah, he, he's partially inspired by um, uh, one of the characters in Sailor Moon. I don't know if the Casanova guy in the. <laughs> so, like, he's, um, he's, but he's like a. A terrible Casanova. Uh, <laughs> he, he travels with an entourage of chickens, uh, tr uh, performing chickens. So already got a bit of a platforming kind of mini challenge there, trying yeah. to cross that gap. So yeah, some of the moves that. Uh, oh my God, this looks so good. Yeah, this ramp. Get out of here. <laughs> Yeah, we did a lot of work on our lighting engine, um, yeah, okay. for, specifically for Guacamelee 2. So the, the environment has normal mapping on everything. None of our previous games had, had that. Uh, so every time he does a super move, or uh, you'll see like the backgrounds are lighting up 
realistically, everything is still 2D, but it looks like 3D lighting. Uh, is this is this your first PS4 game? No, uh, we did do Super Turbo Championship Edition for. Ah, uh, right, right, yeah. right. Okay, but that was again, you know, an update of a game that was yeah. originally designed for PS3 and Vita. That's so right. what's it like building a game from scratch for PS4 compared to your past efforts? Uh, well, yeah, now. Uh, we were able to, to try and harness like a lot more of the power of the PS4 this time. Uh, we, like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> were there any kind of Good restrictions job. that uh, things that you wanted to do in the first game that now are unlocked to you? Yeah, like so. For example, the lighting is something that is, is entirely new for this, and yeah. uh, we're able to do that by not like just focusing on like the current generation of platforms and not looking at older platforms anymore. So. This is another mechanic. That you see those pillars that pop out. Uh, there's these little plates at the bottom of the screen here that if you walk over, they, they pop out a, oh, nice. a pillar. So enemies can trigger them too and, and can get hurt by them, but you, oh, can, nice. you can also use them for platforming. You can jump off them when they're... So right off the bat, you've got some kind of challenging uh, platforming and combat stuff going on here. You're not not uh, taking it easy on... on no. <laughs> uh, yeah, in the demo, you know, we relaxed it a little bit, so like we, we give them infinite stamina, so you can do oh, as many nice. super moves as you want. But in the full game, you know, you have to be careful about like uh, more strategic about how you use your super moves. Cool. I remember um, near the end of the first Guacamelee, there was a particular boss that when I talk to people about Guacamelee, <laughs> everyone says, "Yeah, I made it to that cheetah boss, and I just I kind of couldn't get past it." Jaguar Javier. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Did yeah. you guys learn anything from that? Is that something that you've heard too? Yeah. So with that particular boss. I, Oh, <laughs> this is so great. <laughs> I just want all of this all the time. So this is the chicken pope. Uh, <laughs> and we're in the chicken church here. This is like, a, they have like a weird Illuminati shrine with an egg in the background. Uh, <laughs> so he's unlocked the, ch the power of chicken here. Uh, for one. Yes. So there's a much there's a much bigger focus on the chicken in Guacamelee 2. In, in the first game, the chicken had a, like a very basic peck attack, but now the chicken can dodge, the chicken can throw, the chicken can wall jump, uh, and you even unlock additional moves. Uh, even in the demo, there's a new chicken move that we unlock. Is there any downside to playing as a chicken? Because right now you're just selling me on all chicken all the time. There's there's benefits to playing as the chicken and benefits to playing as Juan. Okay. Uh, so the chicken, uh, when the chicken does its super moves, it uses half as much stamina, so it can do twice as many moves, but okay. it doesn't do as much oh damage. my goodness! Uh, so at the next, uh, the next uh, awesome games done quick, we'll see chicken only speed run. <laughs> yeah. Melee too. Uh, oh my gosh, Graham! Yeah, this is a uh, Graham. I can't, I can't, <laughs> I can't take it. <laughs> this is one of these powers that will happen occasionally in the game. Just I it. Yeah. love it. <laughs> yeah, a lot more focus on the chicken, indeed. Yeah. Holy cow! How do you, as a as a team, kind of? balance out visual clarity with keeping things interesting and exciting, you know, because yeah. you want your game to be readable, especially in a 2D space like this, but you uh, also want to, like, make it feel like it's active and alive. It, that's a very challenging problem. And in fact, in multiplayer, uh, so the game will support four players. Yeah, that, <laughs> that's um, another thing. <laughs> and one of the biggest challenges we've had in our playtesting so far is just players not being able to find themselves on screen. Mm, uh, because especially when there's like tons of enemies around. Right. So what we're doing potential solutions to that. Uh, so now we, we do things like we dynamically show like a little triangle over your head when there's too many characters around. So you can find yourself it'll, like it'll keep, give your player number in the, in the middle of the triangle. Uh, now the chicken priest is going to give you a new power here. This is the chicken <laughs> shot. Uh, is this how you're going to come across new abilities throughout the course of the game? Yes, yes. <laughs> so it's it's much more compressed here. Uh, usually, you know, we give an ability and then we we play with that ability for some time. Uh, let the player get, and then we combine it with other abilities. Um, <laughs> So the chicken shot is like a, it's like a, you can do like a downward dive or an upward dive. Yes. Uh, and it goes on the diagonals. Oh, nice. Oh, Color coded barriers. Yeah. So you know what you can go back to. Perfect. So, and enemies sometimes have barriers, not in the demo, but in the game. So sometimes you have to use specific moves to break their barriers. Uh, so you'll find yourself switching between Juan and the chicken throughout combat. Nice. Um, so I love how you can, he can say that seriously. <laughs> switching between Juan and the chicken throughout <laughs> combat. Yeah. So Guacamelee was uh, not too crazy long. It was a good length, probably, what, like five or six hours? Yep. I mean, it took Average to get through it. Was about six Are you looking at about the same thing here, or are you beefing it up a little bit? Uh, so we've, we've already, we have the game built out end to end right now, and we're still editing it. Uh, yep. Currently, it's, it's a bit longer than the original game. And I, I, if I had to guess, I would say it's probably going to end up a bit longer. Cool. Are you looking at ways to uh, uh, add more replay value, any kind of uh, yeah. reasons to play the game again? Or? Much of this, much of the studio right now is working on uh, like side content, in-game content, awesome. secret stuff. Cool, uh, cool. Yeah. Is that how you 
guys usually work is you kind of build out the framework first and then begin filling it in over time. Yeah, yeah. What's we, your workflow at the studio like? We really like to we li really like to build our games uh, through iteration. And uh, so in August we had our first alpha, which was the entire game playable from end to end. Um, and then we did a second alpha, we call it Alpha 2, and that finished in November. Uh, now we're working towards beta. So, But every time we, we have the entire studio play through the whole game, give their feedback to us, we, uh, we prioritize everything, and then we do another pass based on that feedback. So, And these are the dimension waves, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so uh, the Living and Dead worlds are coming back in Walk Mini 2. Uh, you'll gain the ability to swap between them dynamically at some point. But at the beginning of the game, you'll be exposed to them through these dimension waves. So you can see your, the, the purple is like a window into the dead world that's moving through the environment. It's uh, a really like organic way to introduce that concept, I think. Yeah. Uh, and we're, we're able to do some interesting things with it. Uh, like here, you can see enemies are, uh, this is another example. So you have the lava in the living world, but not in the dead world. So we have like this like God. horse progression uh, set up here that the players <sighs> have to move through. Oh, wow. I'm trying to think of the programming involved <laughs> here, and I, my brain is hurting a little bit. But I'm sure smarter people than I are, are on the case. This was a challenging one to do, because uh, there's a lot going on here. Uh, you have like two completely different setups, uh, and, and the visuals are you know showing one, in, one at a time through like little windows. Yeah. Is this? I, I'm sorry. I think you mentioned this earlier in the segment, but do you uh, do you build on your own engine, or do you use an existing framework? Yeah, this is all our own engine and our oh, own okay. editor. Yeah, oh, yeah. Nice. that's amazing. Yeah. So it's been seven years. Juan looks uh, looks like he's still in pretty good shape. Yeah. Are you guys <laughs> give me give me some tips? You guys thinking about <laughs> any like unlockable skins for like a like an older Juan or anything like that? Well, actually, at the start of the game. Uh, when uh, before Juan gets his mask again, he has a bit of a pot belly. He's oh, a yeah. bit slower. He doesn't punch as hard. Uh, so, you know, uh, eventually you get back to your your normal shape. Beards are in right now. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> definitely. Uh, so this is El Nieco again. Uh, so this is he's going to be the first boss in the game that you uh, nice. that you fight. You guys have really stepped up your animation. Yeah, like uh, I can yeah. tell you guys have gotten a lot better. I mean, you were already excellent at it, but seeing this guy's attacks, like it it's, looks excellent. Yeah, hit, our our, anima our animation team is a little bit bigger this time around. Yeah, uh, okay. yeah, the team is about the same size overall, but uh, how big is the team at Drinkbox? Uh, right now, it's twelve people. That's it. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Isn't that ridiculous? <laughs> That's yeah. insane. I could make this with like four hundred people. <laughs> on the so. Uh, is this running at a targeted 60 or is this 30? I, I'm having a hard time telling. It's running at 60, yeah. Nice. And uh, and it, it's enhanced for PS4 Pro. We're doing 4K HDR. Oh, nice. Oh, man, HDR is going to look so good on this game. Yeah. I actually, I'm just going to take this TV back home with me <laughs> after the live cast is over. So. Oh, this is so flippant. Your, yeah. your designers must have a lot of fun with things like our boss fights more fun or more challenge than the to normal run of design? Game. Yeah, to um, design. What would you say? Boss fights are one of the most challenging things to design. Okay. Uh, You're yeah. like, they're not yeah. fun at all. <laughs> I hate them. They usually take more iteration than, uh, than anything else. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so you see how you can use the pillars to you know, strategically block uh, projectiles. This boss fight looks amazing. I mean, <laughs> you're right. Boss fights are hard to get right. Yeah. Um, but man, I'm, I'm very encouraged by what I'm seeing here. Did the team look to anything in particular uh, for inspiration to, you know, either in the, for the main game or for the boss fights this time around? Um, Has anything really resonated with you guys in the past, you know, since Guacamelee? Not, uh, not I'm to inspire the I'm reminded a little bit of a shovel knife with the um, uh, the triangle yeah. uh, traversal technique there, uh, kind of similar to something I saw in a, was it the uh, Spectre of Torment campaign they came out with kind of recently? Yeah, yeah. Um, one game that I played after after the first year of Guacamelee's development was uh, Hollow Knight, which Ooh, yeah. Ooh, I've heard really good things. Incredible boss that. fights in that game, yeah. Okay. Um, so, you know, I do take some inspiration from that, but a lot of the work had gone into the game already by that time. Okay. Uh, uh, <laughs> You're like, well, maybe yeah. for the sequel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This yeah, is fantastic. Perfect. I just I can't believe that something this beautiful and this this fun and tactile is made by twelve people. <laughs> well, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I mean it's it's not easy. That's for sure. Uh, but our team is extremely talented. Everyone yeah. on the team. Is oh, absolutely. Great. And you have a lot of experience now. I mean, you guys are no joke and have been really building a library and a catalog for yourselves over the years. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you guys have really kind of mastered. 2D games here. Um, have you have you ever messed around with any 3D prototypes? Have you guys dipped your toe into those waters at all? Or a little bit. Um, when we were when we were deciding what project to work on, we ended up deciding on Severed. Uh, we had split the team up into multiple small groups to do prototypes, and uh, and one of them was uh, one of them was a 3D sneaking 
uh, game. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Cool. We, we tried using Unity for that because our engine really doesn't do 3D that well. <laughs> um, but uh, but I don't know. 2D is kind of our wheelhouse. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. We're very comfortable you guys are so good at it. Yeah. There's some of the premier 2D developers out there as far as I'm concerned. Thank you. You heard it here first. <laughs> yes, <laughs> They're going to put it on every box, on every website. <laughs> so tell us a little bit more about how the four-player co-op works. Does it get too chaotic? I mean, there, that can be kind of fun when yeah. you have like the really chaos-driven co-op sometimes too. It's um, yeah. So there's some benefits to it. Like you're easy to, it's easier to control crowds of enemies. Um, yeah. But but we do scale the difficulty dynamically, so enemies will have more health, then they will do more damage when there's uh, more players. Uh, um, and then also certain enemy setups will will change if there's uh, four players. Mm -hmm. So uh, and, uh, yeah. So a lot of the challenges is trying to keep everyone on screen at the same time and making people feel uh, like. Often through some of the platforming challenges, one player will pull ahead. And so you, you don't want the people who are falling behind to feel like they're just being pulled along. Uh, so uh, we're still working a lot on the four-player stuff and trying to you know tweak our cameras, how they work with four players. Yeah. yeah. And the bot, so that must make the boss battles even more difficult to design than they already are. If yeah. You take into account either yeah. one, two, three, or four people. In Man, many of our design meetings, uh, you know, we think we've solved it, and then someone says, what about four-player? <laughs> and then you're like, oh, no. <laughs> and you throw, you throw your, <laughs> yeah. your coffee at them, and yeah. they cower in a corner. Yeah. Um, Some of the best uh, like beat 'em up games ever have been like the four player kind of brawler type games. So yeah. I think that you guys have a, a strong legacy to look to there. Is it local or online? I forgot to ask. It's it's player. it's local only. Um, yeah, we we have actually have a lot of experience doing multiplayer online from previous to starting Drinkbox. So we know the challenges involved with that. Uh. So it's. It's very expensive to put online multiplayer into a game, yeah. especially a fast-paced action game like this. Right. So, we'd prefer to invest that in, into the like the single player and, and local multiplayer experience. Uh, yeah, it's well, rude to beat up a <laughs> 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 It's rude to beat up anybody, sir. <laughs> So long, nerds. <laughs> Can well, that I guess that's a perfect somebody outro. Somebody give right? that, all right? <laughs> somebody just make a gift of that, please. Guacamelee 2. So that's Guacamelee 2. Yeah, it looks amazing. I'm so excited. Thanks very much, guys. Um, so yeah, thanks so much for joining us. Is there anything else you want to tell fans before we let you go? Uh, no. If you're, I guess, if you're a PSX, please come by our booth. We'd love to have you try the demo out. Uh, we'll be playing four-player all, all weekend, and uh, keep an eye out for us early next year. Yeah. All righty, Guacamelee 2 coming to PlayStation 4. Looks so fantastic. I'm so excited for it. Coming up next, we've got a look at Soul Calibur 6. Stay tuned. PlayStation.